well welcome back to the rant review pro wrestling yeah it's been a minute um a lot of other things came up in life because life happens but we're gonna check in with the pro wrestling and sports entertainment world here on this quick news update from the past week and a half i should say of the world of aew wwe new japan pro wrestling but before we get into that i want to remind you guys i got lots of free goodies down in the description box below for you included among them there's a link to Coinbase where you can get some free crypto by just signing up to Coinbase. And you probably want to get on to that because Bitcoin's going crazy. Dogecoin's going crazy. Ethereum's going crazy. Yeah, you probably should have picked up on it maybe six months ago before it went up. But, you know, hey, if you want to get on the train now, you can do it by using one of those links down in the description box below. So check that out if you're interested. But let's talk about what's been going on since the last time I did a video. Now, full disclosure, I had intended on doing a video a week ago after the big business AEW Dynamite show, but time has passed on. So that's got that video. I listened to the audio the other day and I was like, this is outdated now. So let's talk about first AEW, what's been going on since I last did a video. Since the big business show, of course, Mercedes Monet made her big debut. We've got other things going on with AEW and the change in the booking and the change in the structure of their shows. Now, this weekend, we are without any AEW because of March Madness. So Rampage happened after Dynamite on Wednesday, which was another stellar Dynamite. Adam Copeland, Christian Cage in the main event in a... I quit match, which, you know, pretty damn good. I quit match. We had a lot of craziness, a lot of shenanigans in there. Spike came into play. Um, I've loved the entire setup for Christian Cage and Adam Copeland and their rivalry in AEW since Copeland has arrived in the company. I do think this is probably the conclusion of it. We're probably going to see Cope and uh, Christian move on to other things now. But this was a great match. Uh, Adam Copeland becomes your new TNT champion for two times now the first time he was only champion for what like 30 seconds but now he's a two-time champion and I, that sets up some interesting stuff now because there are guys looking for titles uh you have a lot of heels now who can be champions who are going to be coming after copeland so i do expect to see the open challenge return with adam copeland now having some matches against guys that he's never wrestled before and that's going to be really fun we also had another new champion this past Wednesday, as also a couple weeks ago, Kazushika Okada made his debut in AEW. He is now part of the Elite, taking over Kenny Omega's spot, which is kind of funny with the Young Bucks. And that trio, that trio is really good. I, I, I hesitate to say it's kind of like the NWO, the original NWO, because it really, it is and it isn't. It isn't as impactful as when Hogan was revealed to be the third man. Okada being a third man now in the elite after they kicked out Kenny Omega is it's similar but not the same but I like the fact that Okada is really embracing you know his more heel tendencies which have always been there uh, Okada was all you know he was seen as a face for the most of the last couple of years in New Japan but you know you see him when he would take on like Tenzon and a G1 or he would face certain other guys especially last year when he was uh feuding with Kaito Kiyomiya from uh pro wrestling Noah Heel Okada is a lot, of, a lot of fun. Heel Okada is very entertaining, and he's been healing it up ever since he's been in AEW. Uh, he's funny. Uh, his in-ring stuff is funny. The backstage promos, what he, they've got him doing are pretty good. And he was taking on Eddie Kingston just for the Continental Championship, not for the Triple Crown. So it was only the AEW title, not the Ring of Honor title or the New Japan Strong title, which I thought would have been funny because when he challenged Eddie Kingston, I was like, so wait a minute, Okada's probably going to, well, Okada, obviously we all knew he was going to win, but he's probably going to wind up with a New Japan championship after just leaving New Japan. No, he isn't. Eddie Kingston is still the NJPW Strong Champion and the Ring of Honor World Champion, but he is no longer the AEW Continental Champion. Okada won that belt this past week in, in magnificent fashion, uh, showing that he still got it, and I am so excited to see what Okada has in the future. We got Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson now setting up for a big match at AEW Dynasty next month in April. And I, let me let me say this about Ospreay and Okada. And I've said this on social media, but you know, for those of you who don't follow me on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, or I'm not even on Instagram anymore, but if you don't follow me there, I'm going to reiterate it here. For so many years, we have heard how, oh, Okada can't cut promos. Will Ospreay can't cut promos. They'd be bad in AEW. They'd be bad in WWE. Okada's personality is absolutely coming through on AEW television. 
He is fantastic. He knows exactly what he's doing. And Will Ospreay, my God. I, I mean, I've, I've watched Ospreay since his first match in New Japan against Kushida back in, I think it was 2016. Been a big fan of Ospreay's for a long time. Osprey could cut a promo, but I did not know how good he was going to be on American television cutting promos. He's probably one of the best promo guys, strangely enough, right now in wrestling. I'm not stretching when I say that. He's pretty good. He's pretty damn good. He's got command of the audience. He knows how to tell a story in his promos. He knows how to hit his right beats in his promos. He studied this. You can tell he studied how to do North American TV wrestling for a while, and he's doing a damn good job. And I cannot wait for his match against Danielson. I just don't want a Tiger Driver 96 or 97 or whatever the hell it is on Danielson. Let's not do that. Um, both of them have faced or are going to be facing Shibata. Danielson just faced Shibata last week on Collision and won the match, which was a dream match for me. And now Osprey will be having a rematch that's like seven years in the making uh, from the last time he faced Shibata in New Japan coming up this week on Dynamite to kind of say, you know, look, Danielson, what you can do, I can do better. Uh, so it's great. It's great to see all of this stuff. All these guys are being used in the right way. AEW has been doing really good. The new change in the way that they're structuring their shows, uh, the new look of Dynamite. Uh, they, they're even adding little things where Renee is like, doing little uh, pre-match promos to explain the matches between the entrances. She did that between uh, Okada's entrance and Eddie Kingston's entrance this past week. Uh, more promos that are very short and to the point. I, I think they've, they've made a lot of changes. They've listened to the fans. This is one thing that AEW has done consistently. They usually do is that they do listen to the criticism and they do try to make changes and we see those changes being made. So I think Dynamite's been a pretty good show for the past couple weeks. We'll see if this continues and we'll see if it affects the ratings, even though I personally am tired of talking about ratings and crowd attendance or whatever. I mean, AEW's had big, bigger crowds the last couple of weeks because they've been promoting the matches and big matches ahead of time. But we'll see how that all pans out as we head on towards Dynasty coming up next month. Over in New Japan, the New Japan Cup concluded... Uh, I did a catch up about the New Japan Cup a week or two ago. Uh, the tournament highlights for me, uh, surprising that Zack Sabre Jr. lost to <laughs> to Ren Narita. That was that was a shocker. Um, David Finley wound up being injured and out of the tournament, which resulted in Hiroki Goto, who I think at this point in time, the New Japan Cup's been around since 2005. So Goto's been in seven finals now. So he's been in more than a third of all of the New Japan Cup finals. He's won three, and now he has lost four as he lost the final to Yoda Suji, which we kind of expected. Now, from knowing Gato's booking and his love affair with long-haired foreigners, I kind of think that David Finley was supposed to be in the finals and it wasn't supposed to be Goto. But when in doubt, and it's the New Japan Cup, rely on Hiroki Goto. Um, but Goto, I think they got to give Goto a big win too. That guy is... he. I would not mind seeing him with a run with the championship at this point. I think it's now or never. Well, not now or never, but I think in the next year or two, Goto should get a shot at that title and maybe should have a run. Even if it's like a two-month run, I think it's at this point, Hiroki Goto, I hate saying the word deserves, but I think it would be a feel-good story and a great moment to send Hiroki Goto on the run to get the world championship and for him to actually win it at some point in time over the next year. We'll see if New Japan does that or not. But the big story is Yoda Suji winning the New Japan Cup. He will now be facing at Sakura Genesis, his stablemate and stable leader, Tetsuya Naito, for the IWGP World Championship, which possibly could be leading to a big string of matches for Tetsuya Naito as IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. The winner of that match, which I'm assuming is going to be Naito, the very next week is going to be defending the title against John Moxley at Windy City Riot. The re and the reason I say Naito is probably going to win the match against Suji, which kind of gives away the main event, is that they've already sold 6,000 tickets, which is probably the biggest, one of the biggest New Japan Strong audiences that they've had since they started New Japan Strong in the States for that Windy City Riot show where Moxley is going to be challenging for the IWGP Championship. Him versus Naito, I'm definitely getting that pay-per-view. Uh, the other card, that the card they're just stacking up for that pay-per-view is pretty good. They just announced that Ishii will be challenging uh, Nick Nemeth, formerly known as Dolph Ziggler, for the Global Championship. So there's a lot going on there. 
Uh, we did also get an announcement that Gabe Kidd is re-signed with New Japan Pro Wrestling, which I think is crucial because he is one of the biggest potential big stars that they've got right now on a roster of all the young guys that are coming up. Uh, again, for me, it's Gabe Kidd, Yoda Suji, and I would say I, I would say Shota Umino, but they've been booking him kind of weird lately. Uh, but I think that's a big thing. Those are the three big things that I think coming up in New Japan. Ren and Rita, not so much. Uh, and the jury is still out on Yuramura for me. I know they're praising up Yuramura a lot, but I I need to see a little bit more uh, from him as far as him being a next big star. One of the things, and I hate to say this. Well, no, I don't hate to say this. This needs to be said. The thing that ruined the New Japan Cup for me this year was the House of Torture. There were so many House of Torture matches. There was so much House of Torture shenanigans. It's the same thing over and over again. It ruins the atmosphere of the matches. Uh, Jack Perry being part of it, I mean, it kind of makes sense when you look at it because there really wasn't any other faction for Jack Perry to join with. I don't think he would have been good if, to adding him to Bullet Club. I don't think that would have worked. Um, and he wouldn't be with any of the other factions. So it made sense that he was in the House of Torture, but I hate the House of Torture. And they've ruined a lot of the New Japan Cup for me personally. I get the excitement that they get from, you know, when the, the good guys come in and thwart the House of Torture and Evil loses or Renderita loses or whatever. It's exciting, but it's not New Japan. They're not the kind of New Japan that we want to see. We did get to see some of the New Japan we wanted to see with, especially Sonata's match with Goto. I definitely would go out of my way to see that if you haven't seen it. Uh, there were a couple other matches on, on the tournament that were great. And the final, while not a great match of the year contender between Yoda Suji and Hiroki Goto, it was, it, it did feel like a good traditional New Japan style of match with two Japanese wrestlers going at it, which we don't see a lot of. And I think we want to see more of it. I think the Western fans want to see more of that. I think the Japanese fans want to see more of it. We don't need to bring in Nick Nemeth and Matt Riddle and all these other guys and Brian Danielson to have main event matches. Build up your homegrown Japanese guys. And if you're going to do it, do it. Let's go with Kiyomiya if he's coming into New Japan. Let's go with Yurimura. Let's go with Yoda Suji. Let's go with Renarita and put them in those finals. Suji was the best choice. I think he's going to make a good showing of himself against Naito uh, at Sakura Genesis. But I think it's, I don't think he's going to win a title, but I think it's a step towards him. He's, he's eventually going to be a champion. He's the best standout of that whole group. So we'll see what happens with that in the future. But a uh, big month coming up for New Japan uh, next month in April. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff going on, and we definitely will be following it here on the channel. As for WWE, of course, the train continues on to WrestleMania XL. Some stuff coming out that's not backstage stuff. Um, I mean, there, there are rumors going around about some people being upset with The Rock, being able to cut the promos that he has. I will say that this whole thing with The Rock and Roman and the Bloodline and Cody and Seth and Jay has been interesting. But I'm wondering, part of me has to wonder, I should say, uh, are, are they, are they, have they squeezed almost all the juice out of this? Because... I did see the SmackDown confrontation between Cody and Roman, and they've been building up to this for a couple weeks, building up to a promo. So I was excited to see the promo, but it didn't really, it, it kind of fell flat a, a little bit for me. It's a, the storyline has, there's such gravitas to this storyline. I think that's the only way I can really describe it. It feels huge. It feels big, which it should. Um, and there's a lot of little subtle, uh, implied things with the storyline the fact that they're both second generation third generation wrestlers whatever or second generation wrestlers wrestling's in their family they come from wrestling families the fact that roman was the man in wwe cody went away he started the second the number two company i noticed that whole thing with roman talk about he, he was the number one cody was a really good number two uh, Cody referenced the Bullet Club. He had his Bullet Club cuff links on when he was talking about the whole faction thing, which I thought was funny because I mentioned a while ago that a lot of what was going on with the Bloodline reminded me a lot of the storylines that were happening with Cody and Kenny Omega and the Bucks and Heyman back a couple years ago when they were doing the Bullet Club thing. It's very eerily, there are a lot of similarities between that and, and what was going on with the Bloodline a few years ago. But it's all coming to a head now at WrestleMania XL. Um, the promos have been great. Rock's promos have been excellent. Uh, Roman's promos have been excellent. Cody's promos have been excellent. I even like what Seth has been doing. Seth being kind of an afterthought, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, CM Punk being on the fence, we'll see what happens with that later on in the future. But right now, I think 
WrestleMania is pretty much a two match show. The matches that I'm interested in, I'm not really interested in much, much of anything else on the card, except for the tag match main event on night one with Rock and Roman against Seth and Cody. And of course the match between Cody and Roman on night two, which I think they absolutely have to get the belt on Cody. The question is, I don't think any of us question that and it would be criminal if they didn't do it. If they, did, if they, Cody does not win that match for some weird reason, and he does not take that belt off of Roman, that would be a huge mistake. It, they, they, the fans allowed it last year, even though they really were upset about it. They allowed it to happen last You can't do that two years in a row. You can't do that. So Cody's got to win. The question is, what happens after Cody wins the title? What is WWE going to be like? They're going to have to completely switch up the main, the main plot line of WWE, which has been Roman and the bloodline for the last two, two and a half years. And they've done a great job with that. But now the main plot line is going to have to revolve around Cody and Seth and Drew. And I think CM Punk's going to be involved with that. So what kind of storyline are you going to tell with that? What's Roman going to do if he loses, when he loses the title at WrestleMania, you know, he's not booked to be on too many WWE shows for the rest of the year. He's kind of, easing his way out of being a full-time, well, he's not a full-time wrestler and he's easing his way further out of being a full-time wrestler. What's the rocks participation going to be in, in the future? A lot of questions around what's going to happen with WWE after WrestleMania XL. So, um, I think just enjoy the ride. We're in the last little bits of this hero's journey that Cody Rhodes has been on for the last two years and we all want to see it. end. and then what the future is, we'll have to find out about it. I am again, as a writer myself, I'm very interested and have been very, very impressed with how WWE has told the traditional hero's journey, which is a storyline mechanism that you, you've seen a thousand times over and it's because it, it works. I'm very impressed in how they've adapted that and used that to tell Cody's story. And I'm probably going to do a more in-depth video before WrestleMania to talk about how that really works. Because a lot of people talk about storytelling and wrestling without ever actually analyzing how the storytelling is and why certain things work and why certain things don't work. So I think I'll do that before WrestleMania comes up and let me know if you guys want to see any other stories like that or any of the videos uh, breaking down the, the mechanics of storytelling and how things work and why certain things work and why certain things don't work. But that is all for today. That is me catching up with real wrestling has been. I will try to do more videos in the next couple of weeks as we head to some pretty big shows coming up for AEW, WWE, and New Japan. The big three, in my opinion. But I want to know what you guys think. Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. I will also check out Kenny Omega, the cleaner's corner. He's got a Twitch live stream uh, that's been making some waves because he's doing his own match ratings. I watched uh, one Friday night and it was actually pretty good because uh, he's a gamer and I like gaming and he's talking about wrestling and he talks about both at the same time so it's, it might be worth a watch if you want to check out the cleaners corner on twitch and um yeah we're gonna again we'll talk about more stuff in the future also check out my gaming channel the rant review gaming i'm finishing up poppy playtime and i did do a review of the ones who live on the entertainment channel and we will be finishing up our, our um well we'll be starting our reviews of x-men 97 on the internet an entertainment channel coming up very soon if you're interested in any of that until next time i'll see you guys here for more news rumors and commentary on the rant and review pro wrestling have a good day